Looks like they're starting the game without any further ado. It will be on Zell Naga Caverns, Empire Koss against Idra, game number two. And it looks like the match has now begun. If you would like him to come back 2-1 and crush Idra's hopes of coming back in the tournament, give a tear for Empire Koss! But if you'd just like to see Idra win and cause more drama in the later stages of the tournament, give a cheer for Idra! I think the crowd knows what they want, Sean. But is it going to happen? Because of my multitasking skills with my mouse and keyboard, I looked into the match history of Murs and Nama. And for you guys at home with the multiple monitors, you already know the results, but the guys in the studio, well, studio, the tent, sorry, the tent here, um, currently, <laughs> the studio, the, the current score between those two, Nama takes game one, Murs takes game two, and they're in the third game right now, playing it out. Murs one game away from also knocking Idra out of this, mm -hmm. and uh, this is really going to come down to this final game. Can Idra take it, and also, does Murs have what it takes to knock out Idra? Yeah, that's a very gross feeling for Idra, knowing that if you lose this series, you're out. And if you win this series, you might be out. It depends if Murs won or not. And that is a terrible feeling when you win the series and turn over and see Murs fist pumping to himself, going, oh, I got second place. <gasps> I don't that know what country really he's daunting, from, because if yeah. I did, I would have done a terrible accent. <laughs> Murs is Swedish. <laughs> oh, yeah, I went to tournament. <laughs> yeah, but imagine that. If you were Idril playing this game right now by cast, and just in the corner of your eye, you see Murs get up and like high-five Naniwa and everyone else, how would you feel? You'd be like, all right, you just GG and leave. Like, there's, there's no reason to play. And that could be quite daunting if he sees that. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cameras around there, hopefully taking some pictures if, if that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> we see Idra going for a pretty typical early expand. No ultra fast gas yet on this map. Two racks plays, so standard. A lot of early aggression plays, so standard. Though traditionally, the very fast factory with Reactor is the most standard on this map due to the wide open spaces. If you look at Idris Natural, the huge entrances from the left, but especially the openness of the front means that those blue flame hellions can just, or just regular red flame hellions can pick and prod and do tons of damage right at the start. There's EG Idra marching right on in. We'll see the factory. Mm, and will. at this point, nothing quite known yet. Idra will likely go for a gas steal, crossing Banshees off his list of things to worry about. But no, it looks like he really wants to see what that factory is going to be up to. And, uh, another Marine has been queued up, so it doesn't look like we will be seeing the reactor super fast. We might be seeing a very similar build to the previous one, uh, where he's going to be adding on that factory quite fast and then going for uh, these blue flame hellions. Uh, we'll have to see how that does develop for now, but at the meantime, Idra uh, getting six links usually. I mean, we saw Sen get two. Pretty standard is to get four, but Idra getting six, uh, oh. which is kind of surprising. Apparently a little bit worried about an early attack, and it looks like, hey, Koss may be going for the very fast one Banshee play. Looks like he will be saving up money. There's the starport going down. Couple Marines from Koss just darting forward. Maybe going to do a little bit of damage, maybe not. Either way, just controlling this watchtower for a temporary period of time. Very, very smart at this stage. There's the four Zerglings out right now for Idra. Two more on the map as well. So this three Marine push, not going to do much damage unless Koss can pick off these two Marines. Excuse me, these two Zerglings for free. Empire Koss just pulling back pretty typically. Ooh, pulling that queen off Crete, but here come the remaining Zerglings to clean up, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, a nice Whoa! dart in there by Cass. And uh, with correct micro, he should be able to win this. And uh, indeed he wow. does, and the queen now in a little bit of danger, and Idra uh, having to build more, more Zerglings here. Four do come out, but very nice pressure with just these three simple Marines. And here we do see a Banshee now popping out. MMA managed to take down Idra with a very fast Banshee play himself. Idra will end up eliminating those Marines. And, uh, <laughs> and Idra is moving into position with this overload. Is going to go in and we'll see the barracks and factory with the reactor going down now. But will he go deep enough to see the starport with the tech lab? And he might decide to turn around though. Uh, we do have Ling's on the uh, the ramp here, doing a little bit of damage, being pushed away, and it looks like Idra is going to go all the way and uh, scout this tech lab and this star point. Should be able to react quite accordingly. We see that there is a spine crawler going down. Second queen now popping out. Layer going up as well. So this does mean the Overlord has a clear picture of what's going on inside this base. 
but do not discredit Empire Koss. He's the sort of player who's very, very good at transitioning out of situations like this. A Viking now coming out, one of the now favorite openings of Terran players around the world, the, the Banshee followed by Viking, picking off things on the ground, picking off things on the air, like he just doesn't care. And <laughs> and uh, we do have Ija being forced to go for the uh, from possibly a couple of spore crawls because he did see the tech lab research and then it got cancelled. Oh my and, uh, gosh, that's good. That's uh, very smart play. And Ija actually, yes, is going to get a spore crawler. So that intention was completed by Cass, but he's taken a lot of damage by this Banshee. Well, it looks like Empire Cast does manage to do one kill worth of direct damage, but has done some indirect damage with the spore crawlers. But I still don't quite feel like Empire Koss is in the best position, but you know what I always love to see is the way Empire Koss always transitions back to this three barracks, one factory, one starport mix. In virtually all of his games, we see something like this set up. And once again, the strength of the Fast Banshees revealed. Doesn't matter if you have good defense at home, you end up sacrificing defense for those overlords. And the one Viking is so smart to do, actually, just sniping overlords, getting them out of position so you can come through with drops later on in the game. And uh, it looks like uh, Cass is going to be able to get this other Overlord too, supply wow. capping Idra a little bit. And uh, just one Viking, well worth the investment to do that here. And uh, looks like Cass is going to be adding on that engineering bay. Siege mode is being researched, also stim. So it does look like uh, Cass could do a very fast push. He's one of the uh, few Terrans who really, really consistently always goes for that tank stim push even with all of his crazy openings, loves coming back to that. So it kind of makes him, I don't know if I'd call it easy to predict, but it's always a little intimidating. When you have all these units floating around, then you take a look at the front of his base and know that an attack could be coming at any second because of how aggressive a player Koss is. And uh, not only does the Viking kill a few overlords, does go ahead and scout the third base of Idra. And uh, we very well could see a timing from this. And as I said before, we do have a Medivac moving out now. And I don't think the Sling will see it. And the Medivac will be able to get into the base quite freely. And uh, Idra is going to have, you know, not a very short time uh, to react to this. As it's going to be able to go in there without any scouting information at all. And we see the stem is getting very close to being done. The combat shield already queued up. There's the Viking trying to clear everything out. We see some Mutalists getting ready to pop out. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the Banshee luring all the units away. And there it looks like Empire Cost forces the cancel. And at the same time, Day 9, he drops in the main base of Idra. Is Idra reacting yet? No, he's moving down to try to counteract these units. And this drop in the main could do so much damage. Oh, and there's the stim. Idra completely underprepared, taking a ton of damage. Pulling all the drones off mine. And there goes the queen. All the drones cornered. The mutal is going to try to come back. But there are not that many units there right now. And Idra cleans it up with relative ease. But Koss in a clear lead. And uh, Idra being forced to get the expansion on the right-hand side now. But guess what? Many of going to flood right over it. And Cass could even try to get another cancel. There's a lot more reinforcements coming. And he's going to go ahead and try to get this gold. In this matchup, on this map, you never want to allow the, the Terran player or Protoss player you're playing against to ever get this gold up with ease. And so Idra needs to be doing some form of harassment here. And it looks like Empire Koss sieging those tanks up at the money spot so he can defend both the left and right flanks. Mutalist going to try to float in. Missile turret there to greet him. Oh, Idra does not quite move away in time. And will he lose the Mutalist? No, not quite, but he will lose this rightmost expansion if he is not careful. Zerglings and Banelings trying to move off the creep. There's the stim. It's getting low on health, but it looks like Koss will take some shots at the Zergling before lifting up. The Mutalist going to try to intercept, but Koss looks like he might be able to stim and join it up in time. And oh, not a lot of units for Idra. Needs to have some good Good hits with those Banelings, but none of them managed to do any damage at all. And Cass, phenomenal play so far, and is going to force the cancellation of that hatchery. Idra is still on two base, really desperately trying to get that third one up. And uh, Cass is even going to leave a Marine there just in case uh, of that drone to come back. And Mulus now heading straight down south. But man, Koss always seems to have Marines wherever it tries to move. And this is the hallmark of an amazing Terran player. The Mutalists are never really able to put any pressure on. They're used in defense when they really want to be used as offense. And uh, in comes Mutalists. Going to pick off a Medivac. Should be able to get that. Oh, just about takes a few hits. Should not. De should definitely not go back in at all. And uh, Idris still on two bases struggling so hard you can see his mineral shooting so high up because he needs gas desperately to fight against this he needs upgrades he needs mutilus and the count is so low right now Bailing's count is 
basically non-existent and Cass is going to easily get up this gold base which Idra does not really want. So we see the Mutalus streaming in. They do manage to pick off that one Zergling that is there. So that means the Empire Cast still maintaining the vision advantage. Look, Idra in the exact opposite position that he was in game one, having very little vision around the map on a defensive footing. And these dropships from Empire Cast just spotting Expo after Expo. Zergling's going to try to run around and do a counterattack. They're blocked from the left. So Koss just having a total lockdown, but these Mutalists might be able to clean this drop up regardless. Oh, he doesn't cancel! Big hit there. I mean, he has enough minerals, but ah, still a big hit. Mule is cleaning this up. Ling's trying to do a counterattack, and uh, <laughs> now this gold base is going to go up. They should be able to defend this uh, south location versus these uh, these Ling. Should just pull some off and put some Marines there, and uh, should be able to defend against that quite nicely. But still, I Idra only just now getting these Vespin geysers up, and uh, this is going to be very hard to defend. The timing of attack quite shortly coming uh, from Cass here. Cass's tank count is getting kind of kind of absurd. And I really like this play by Empire Koss. He's just going to overproduce missile turrets. He's already in a lead in terms of resources. Oh, unless he loses these tanks. Looks like he will lose two tanks, but the cost of a couple mutas. But again, he does know he's in the lead, so he's going to overproduce missile turrets, prevent himself from losing to any sort of counterattack. Now he can really ramp up the offense in the way oh, he did in the early days. Tanks. Oh, what do these siege tanks think they are? Dragoons from StarCraft 1? Wow. One gets picked off, and uh, Kaz is going to continue with this, and will continue to pressure. Uh, Idra will be streaming Marines all the way up now, needs to get good position. How many bailings are there? there are so little bailings and so many Marines. It's going to be very hard, and it looks like he's going to get position behind this third base, oh. and uh, that is pretty smart. This is a very scary place for a Terran army to be. Not only is it difficult to kill off once it arrives there, but also the second base is very easy to kill the natural expansion, so right now, this is essentially a completely dead effort for Idra. He's going to continue to add on Larva, see if he can get another round of production. But now a big Zergling Muta Baneling counterattack with very few Banelings in that mix. Empire Koss with a big amount of siege tanks rolling in. Can he get a good hit on the Banelings? It looks like no. Amazingly, the Banelings do manage to work their way through Empire Koss. Going to take some heavy hits at that Expo. Banelings still making their way in. Not going to be the most efficient use of them. There they end up getting taken out. And uh, now these Marines are making their way down. And does Idra have enough to combat these 1-1 one, one Marines? Uh, upgrades on the links. Uh, I don't know. And there's GG. the good game. Wow. 1-1. One, one. You know, that reminds me a lot of Thorazane versus Fruit Dealer from the Team Liquid Star League. The way the Empire Koss was just moving forward and back, dealing with a lot of counterattacks by trying to just do a little damage and then pull back to defend. And, you know, I have a lot of admiration for how long Idra stayed in that game, you know. A lot of people have been criticizing Idra as someone who leaves anytime he's at a disadvantage, but really hung in there till the very, very end of the match. So it means that now they're tied up 1-1. Idra still does have a chance to close out the series. And uh, just to spice this thing up for you guys, uh, the 1-1 result was uh, actually told to me wrong. Nama actually goes ahead and takes Murs out 2-0, which gives Hydra the fighting chance in this last game versus uh -oh. Cass to proceed. That is crazy, but won't it be a three-way tie break at 2-3? Is that I accurate? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I mean, it's, it's going to depend on maps and who beat who. I mean, I don't have that in front of me, so. That is crazy. I mean, if Empire Cost wins this, there's a chance that he might be able to advance through to the next round. But the other players in the group, I need to briefly check to mm. do a little bit of the what if game. Grubby, I know, has not been performing yeah. very strongly in that group, but we do have um, Nama, Murs, Koss, and so Idra. It's definitely, Grubby's definitely out in last place. Mm -hmm. Sase is definitely first, which leaves us with Koss, Nama, Murs, and Idra. I think they might all be 2 3 if mm. Koss wins this game. Mm. There might be a four way tie break in that group. I don't even know if that's. I don't know what's going to happen then. Possible. I'm trying to add the wins up in my head while talking, which is really hard <laughs> I know. to see if that's actually possible. But that might be the case. Regardless, this is a very big situation for Idra. If he wins, he will absolutely be through. If he loses, we will have to open a spreadsheet and do a lot of comparing. <laughs> and it looks like both players are ready to get into this final game, which is going to be on the GSL crevasse map. Both players are good to go. Just need to kick this observer out. And uh, there we go, pretty much ready to continue with this final game between Cass and Idra. 